washes, oil paints, those mythical creatures that can turn this boring piece of garbage into a renaissance painting. What's up guys, so like you might have guessed, this video will be about adding washes and blending oil paints. Like I said in the last video, Sharpie 1 must have been made for washes with those bolts, rivets and panel lines, so I will start exactly with that. Just like before, I will use my old bottle of MIG Productions Dark Wash. The bottle is very tall, so it's easier to pour some into the palette and put the bottle aside. And as usual, two pools of enamel thinner, one for blending, the other one for brush cleaning. I'm gonna demonstrate this technique on the side of the hull. It has everything you can dream of, bolts, rivets, panel lines, raised details, and this is where the glass coat applied in the last video becomes very useful. I can apply the wash over the entire side and it will be easy to remove even hours later. That can be a bad thing if you want to work super fast or even fully paint the model over a weekend, but well, that's not my case, as I'm notoriously known as one of the slowest modelers on the planet. I also found out a cool hack when you're applying wash around bolts or rivets. If you touch the detail with your brush from the side, it will leave a large stain and the cleanup will be more tedious. However, if you touch the detail from the top, the wash will flow down its sides and additional cleanup will be almost completely unnecessary. And by the way, I just cannot help myself, but I'm always just blown away how a simple technique like this can change the model so drastically. Let's now clean up this mess, shall we? The benefit of working in sections like this is that when you're applying the wash, the part where you started is already dry. So, for example, this side took me, I don't know, about 10 minutes to apply the wash, and by the time I was done with the wheels, the side of the hull was ready for blending. I should note that it's important to give the wash some time to dry, because it's much easier to clean it up that way. Trying to do it with wet wash will mostly end up by removing most of it, because the brush bristles will simply suck in the paint, and the entire process will be overall very messy. So always make sure the wash is dry and flat, not glossy. It's also understandable that the cleanup takes more time than application. This clip is actually about 25 minutes of work or so. You can use the more modern approach and clean the wash with makeup sponge, but I'm still old school and I just consider the cleanup to be a form of meditation. Wash is also a fun technique because you are drastically improving the model and you can completely shut your brain off or watch a movie or something and you can, you know, use one eye to do that and the other eye to apply the wash. It's a complete no-brain technique, small effort, great results. So like I said, the model is now on a whole new level, but the surface is... Um, not exactly my cup of tea. Oh, and remember what I said in the construction video? First paint chip on the track. Okay, so let's now get some oil paints. It's important to always pick colors that will work with your paint job. That's why Olive Drap is here. Then I thought a dark brown will also come in handy. And then I thought dark green and white will also come in handy, but I didn't film how I put them on the palette. And then I thought two pools of enamel thinner, one for blending and the other one for brush cleaning will also come in handy. I almost forgot that I let the wash dry for 5 days. In the meantime I was editing the previous video and when that was done I was just living normal, real life for once. 
So because the surface of this tank is quite busy, I wanted to have some control over the blending process, so I decided to apply the paints in smaller amounts, or should I say in pairs, aka I started with the olive drab and dark yellow and blended them. Then I did the same with the remaining colors and I actually used the wash as a guide, so to say. In other words, I kept blending the oils only inside specific panels, which didn't just result in more interesting surface, but also very faintly distinguished the panels from each other. I also like to use this technique as a filter, and you might already see how the olive drab has changed. Now I went for a slightly different technique and I applied the oil paints specifically where I needed them. This was done mainly with the dark brown and shadow brown to lay down the foundation for future effects like heavier layers of dirt and grime, which I observed from reference photos. This doesn't just make the model much more interesting at this stage, but will also add more depth to the upcoming weathering steps. And when the side was done, I cleaned the markings. This is crucial especially on sand-colored or yellowish tanks, where the oils could change the markings into an ugly yellowish off-white color. You can get away with this on grey or green finishes, but I like to have them clean and weather them later with earth effects. If your specific subject requires you to tone them down like this, well, then of course go ahead and DO IT! Working on horizontal surfaces is pretty much exactly the same, you just need to use tapping motion with your brush when blending. It's easier to create more dramatic effects on these surfaces because of the way you're blending them. And I think it's pretty cool to have different effects on horizontal and vertical surfaces. I also painted fake shadows around the engine hatches. You can call them fake shadows or stains or whatever, but they're basically a simple way to make larger details stand out more. The effect gets toned down later in most cases, but sometimes it serves as a base layer for more dramatic effects like fuel or grease stains. And we can use oils to paint highlights as well. Here I'm adding a yellow gradient to the upper sides of the turret to gently stress out its shape. And we also have more paint chips on the tracks. So with this step finished I can say that I'm actually starting to be quite happy with the way the model looks. This might be a bold statement, but I feel like if I painted the details like antenna, tracks and exhaust, I could leave it like this, and it still would look quite presentable. Some subjects are just great for these techniques, and when done carefully, a wash and a few blended oil dots can make a model look like a finished piece. But truth be told, we're not even halfway to the finish, so the next video will be about chipping, more specifically about the first light layer and the dark steel chips, and then the next video will be about rust and maybe something else, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, I hope you liked the model so far, and if you enjoyed this video and maybe got just a tiny bit inspired, you could make me happy by liking the video and sharing it with someone you think might enjoy it as well, and subscribing if you haven't yet, because there's so much more where this came from. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you mates in the next one.